when you process the flax, you rot the plant a little bit, you break it, you scrape it, and the last stage of flax processing is to comb the flax. Now, what we found in most of the farms in uh, eastern Pennsylvania and Lehigh County and uh, in this area, Schuylkill County, was that they would have a little bench like this with a larger comb and a smaller comb. Now, what I have here, this is a long, fine flax that you would be combing through, like that. And this short flax that's left over in the combs, you can see the difference in length. This is the fine flax, sometimes it's called tear, T-A-R-E. This is the toe flax, you can see the difference in length. Now, when you process your flax, you get about 10% flax fiber out of the plant. That's all there is. And about 4% of that, this wonderful long line fiber, and 6%, over half, is the toe flax. So we'll put away the fine flax. That's for another professional spinner. And what I call this particular kind of spinning is plain spinning because you only do one gauge, one thickness. And the flax is full of little sticks. You can see how rough and coarse it is. But there's a lot of fiber here from your crop, and this needs to be spun, because you don't want to just discard all of this wonderful fiber. So I'll put this back here, and I'll prepare for spinning. Now, what I would do is I have a, a bag here of flax from the first comb, the big comb, and coarsest of the flax. When you would go to the second comb, your finished comb, the flax would have very little chaff, it would be a lot finer, and that particular toe you can do on your flax wheel. So, what you would need to have you could go out in the forest here and find a little tree that had branches like this. These are uh, toe distaffs. They're maybe 200 years old, and they both came from the valley here. Flax and uh, spinning equipment is very rare here because uh, people came by the farms and collected this stuff in the 20s, 30s, and 40s when it was very collectible. So it's, it's very hard to find this stuff. But anyway, I have these, and this shows you what a, a spinner would want to have for the finer toe. Now you take your, a bunch of this toe here, and stick it right on the little stick. This is why it has to look like that. It kind of stabs the toe flax, like that. Now, if I had my toe wheel here, I would just put this on where it would have maybe the birdcage distaff for fine spinning, and I'd pull down the flax, just like I would spin the regular fine flax, and you'd get a very nice line. It's not quite as, as fine as the fine line flax because it's shorter and you want to have a thicker thread. So this is what you would do with the finer toe. But what I'm interested in today is spinning the coarser flax. That's what I have in these little clumps here. So I take a bigger comb here. I have all these little clumps for my combing. And what you have to do is recomb this. I pull it. It's almost like doing worsted. You want all the fibers to go in the same direction. This will make your toe spinning a lot easier. I'm not going to be using a flax wheel for this rougher flax. The flax wheel has a small diameter, and it's really designed for fine spinning. And the little hooks that you put the line over are smaller. So it's, it would really be hard to spin this because 
the little uh, clumps and whatever's in the flax would get stuck. So what I do is I use a, a wool wheel for that. And I suspect that that's what people use for spinning their coarser flax, because it works really well. This is a Canadian wheel made about 1860 by Louis Bisson. And uh, my great-grandmother had a wheel made by him. It was uh, exactly like this. And she spun wool on it, but this is very nicely designed for doing toe flax. Let's see. What I, have, what I do here, instead of using a little distaff, I simply hold this like you would a clump of wool, and I'll be able to spin this into a tow line. What I have here are uh, skeins that were never used. These are 18th century skeins, and we were very fortunately High County to find some of the very prosperous farms had enormous amounts of textiles that they, they never used up. This is a this is tow line. This is actually three ply. And you can, I don't know if you can see, there's lots of chaff and sticks and all kinds of things still in this fiber here to show that it is tow line. And this particular one was uh, purple when it was new. You can still see some of the color inside of the skein here. It was it's dyed with logwood to make that color. It's an imported dye wood. And this is a, a double ply. Whatever the, I don't know what these made. This, this kind of fabric was uh, something that was used up. The finer linens were saved for maybe Sunday going to church or for weddings or whatever. And when Granny would die, they would be saved as a memento of her or Grandpa. But this stuff made very serviceable yet beautiful fabrics that were used into rags, and then they would be ground up and made into paper. So there's nothing left of this particular craft except a few fragments to show that this was really an important colonial craft. We had a lot of toe flax. So now we can get back to our toe spinning. See how nicely aligned those are? Even though this is a coarse fiber, I like to wet it a little bit because all of these hairy little ends will get stuck around the nails here if I don't uh, wet it a little bit. There we go. Now it doesn't take a lot of saliva, just moisten your fingers a very little bit and you'll get a pretty good line. Now what I'm going to do is pull this out here and stop. So you can see a pretty good toe line is what I call it. There's a lot of little hairs sticking out of this. why I use some of the saliva. And sometimes you'll get a little lump. In German those are called coxenkups or cat heads in English. And if you see some coarser fabric, you'll notice a lot of these little lumps in it. But it doesn't hurt the fabric at all. Now, let's do some more of this spinning here. Once you get rolling with, with this, you can just spin for hours and hours because it's a very relaxing kind of craft. There we go. Everything has to be in sync. The wheel needs to have just the right tension. And make sure things aren't binding up on it.
So this is toe spinning. What I'm doing is, is making the toe for home use. So all of your crop can be used up. So that's the plain toe spinning.